I was looking at my favorite app to find free items being given away when I found the ad for this battery mower. So if you didn't know it, as more of these are being sold in the stores, you're going to find more of them on the curb, but is that a good thing? So in this video, we're going to try and figure out why they gave it away and then see if it's still usable or if we need to find another use for it. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at this DeWalt battery mower, and the problem is that it starts, but it only runs for about two seconds, and then it shuts down. Now, I don't make a habit of picking up battery mowers, but at some point, finding a gasoline mower will be almost impossible. So you better get used to the idea that these are going to be the only ones you're going to find at the stores. So if you didn't see the shorts video on this mower, here's what it was doing right after I got it out of the truck. Of all the safeties that are on this mower, being upright is apparently not one of them. Now the first reason for it to start and stop like this would be caused by a battery issue. However, if you check the battery indicators on the packs, they say they're full. But these battery indicators may not show you the battery health, but only a surface charge, which is better than nothing I guess, until you start having problems like this one. Now according to the markings on both of them, they're about 4 years old, unless I'm reading them wrong. I'm not sure how long these batteries are supposed to last, but if they are having problems, 4 years is not long enough considering how much they are to replace. So as you can see, the first battery is measuring in at 17.1 volts, which is quite low considering it's supposed to be 20 volts without a load on it. The second battery was exactly the same, which means these batteries are low on power, and before we do any more testing, we need to charge them to full again. Now of course this might take a long time, so in the meantime, I'm going to do something that is not advisable, which is I'm going to clean this mower like I do with all my other projects. I do have to let you know that according to the owner's manual for this particular mower, and I'm sure most electric mowers, tells you not, and I repeat, not to wash the mowers, and that's good advice. And doing so could damage the mower and even void the warranty, that is if you bought it new. Now obviously, I didn't buy it new and I'm going to be the one fixing it, so it's going to be my responsibility to repair any damages to it whether I did it or not. Also, it is your lawnmower and you're welcome to do whatever you feel like to it, just don't rely on someone else to fix it if you end up damaging it. So as you can see, there are a couple of safety devices on this mower and it's a good idea to check and make sure each one is working like it should be. Now for those keen-eyed viewers out there, might notice something familiar about this mower and that is it looks a lot like a regular gasoline mower. And that's completely true, the lower portion of this mower looks like a lot of the other mowers that have gasoline engines on them. That means if I decide to, taking off the electric motor and swapping it out for a gasoline engine is a real possibility. Now I'm not sure how to deal with the upper handlebar and the brake lever, but I'm sure I can figure something out. Now at first I decided to not use my normal degreaser just on the off chance that I do damage something important on the mower. But after realizing that there are some very stubborn areas on there, I decided to use it sparingly though. Now the degreaser that I use is not meant for plant based materials, but it seems to work better than any other stuff I've used before. Now the other item that I use, which is quite handy to have, is a water sprayer, but it's not your typical one for your garden. Instead, I'm using an airless paint sprayer, but instead I'm just using water, and the reason is pretty simple, because it's high pressure but low volume. That way I get great cleaning results, but I don't need to use 20 gallons of water when only about 5 gallons works. Now there's nothing wrong with a good pressure washer, but they simply push too much water when I don't need that much, plus the higher pressure might force water somewhere where I don't want it to be. I'm also going to remove the cover for the front end, that way I can clean there as well. Now once the cover is off the mower, we'll then be able to see that this mowing deck is the same one as the one on your gasoline mower. And just as expected, this is the same front end that I've seen on a lot of the newer mowers, meaning we most certainly can swap out the electric motor for a gasoline engine. Just remember to let the mower dry out before you work on it, otherwise you could trap water in a place where it shouldn't be. So it's been a couple of hours and depending upon your conditions, it might take more or less time to get it to this point. And if you need to, use a leaf blower or even compressed air to help out, especially if you don't have a lot of time to work with it. So here's the worst part, the batteries are still charging, which took me by surprise. I figured that it would take 1-2 to two hours, but I guess when dealing with 20 volt batteries and 10 amp hours, time is something you'll need a lot of. I guess while I'm waiting for them to finish charging, I'll do some maintenance on these self-propel and the wheels. Something that's quite overlooked, and for a good reason, is applying a thin lubricant to the bushings. This will help to keep them from getting stuck to the drive shaft, which if they do get stuck, will keep the wheels from turning. And it also turns out that this wheel has a problem and it's quite serious. 
The steel insert for the wheel is stuck to the axle and making the wheel spin on the insert instead. So how would I go about trying to remove it without breaking it? Simple, I'll spray some sort of solvent on the axle. While I'm here, I'll also give the drive gear a quick spray as well. Then I'm going to use a wrench to wedge the insert off the axle. At the same time, I'll spray it down with my solvent in an attempt to get it between the insert and the axle. I'm also going to drive the insert back onto the axle because the extra movement will also help to get the solvent in between them. And as the insert gets further out on the axle, I'll have to increase the number of wrenches I need. Now I do have to admit it, but this is starting to look a bit comical, but this is a lot better than using locking pliers and breaking the insert. The worst part is that it doesn't appear to be rust that's holding the insert to the axle, only old grease. Next we'll have to clean both the inside of the insert as well as the axle with brake cleaner. So to keep this from happening, I would clean and lubricate the axles at least once a year, and if your wheels have never gotten stuck, then you've been quite lucky. Now on this particular style, the drive gears are not held in place, but are in fact floating on the ends of the shaft. I think this was done only to save money and time on the assembly line, but your guess is as good as mine. After that, I'll put the insert back into the wheel, and then apply a generous amount of lubricant to both the axle and the insert. It is your choice as to how much you apply, and to be honest, if you decided to not put any on there, I'm okay with it. It is your mower, so if you feel like you'd rather avoid the hassle of having to clean and reapply lubricant year after year, I completely understand. So after servicing the front wheel, it's now spinning like it should be, and won't be robbing power from the battery, which will hopefully give us more run time. There's also a spot on the drive shaft that rubs against the plastic, so I'm going to apply some lube there as well for the same reason. Once the front wheels have been taken care of, we'll put the cover back on and do the same for the back wheels. I'm not going to show you that process since you've already seen it done on the front wheels. So the good news is that it only took a whopping 3.5 hours on each battery to charge the full. I don't know about you, but other batteries rated at 56 volts or higher seem to charge a lot faster than these 20 volt lithium batteries. So this is when we discover a massive problem. These 20 volt batteries were only able to get to 18.1 volts and 18.3 volts, which means there might be one or more bad cells in each pack. That means not only will the performance be affected, but also the runtime as well. So would you like to make a guess as to how much runtime I'll get with these four year old worn out battery packs then? So the good news is that it starts and runs now, which means the problem with the mower starting and stopping has to do with the batteries. But the bad news is that we now have to do a run test, which is going to take quite a bit of time. Now if your mower is having a problem, check and make sure that your wires are not damaged. Otherwise the signal to start the mower or one of the safeties might be keeping it from starting. I really hope you don't need any of the safeties or switches in the brake handle because you're going to be out of luck and looking for a new mower instead. So unfortunately, I have not been able to confirm if there's a sensor for the blade to tell if it's out of balance and would cause it to shut down once it gets to speed. However, since this is a brushless motor, there's a good chance that there might be one on there. So anyone who flies drones and deals with damaged props on them might be able to tell us more about it. Now this blade is just a bit warped, meaning one tip is a fraction of an inch down from the other one, which is why there's some vibration in the handlebar. Now the other possibility is that the blade is out of balance on top of being warped, but after using my cone balancer, it turns out to be pretty close to being balanced. So here's a possible test. Try starting the mower without the blade and see what it does. Just be sure that you do this test as safely as possible, otherwise you could get hurt. The last thing that we need to do is put the blade back on the mower and do a run test to find out how long it's going to run for. But for this test, I won't be using it, instead the mower will be stationary. The reason why I won't be cutting grass with it is that I want to give it the best chance possible to get a good run time. I will tell you one thing, and that is I'm very certain that I won't get anywhere close to the 75 minutes they advertise. So I do have to apologize, I think me trying to activate the self propel may have caused a voltage drop and stopped the motor. But as you can see, the runtime is a paltry 26 minutes which would barely be enough for me to mow my front yard. 
Now I did try and start it back up again, and it did run, but only ran for about 30 seconds, which really is enough to make a difference. So what do you think the voltages will be at on these battery packs? Next, I want to measure them and see just how low they got. And it looks like the first battery pack is down to 17 volts, which is close to what it was earlier. However, the other battery pack didn't fare as well at only 15.3 volts, which is a lot lower than before. So what I'm going to do is mark the pack that seems to be the bad one, and then let them both cool down inside before charging them. And as you can tell, the battery indicators do work, but they don't show the whole truth about the battery. I will let you know that I did another test with it afterwards, and this time I mowed the backyard, but this time I used the self-propel. And you know how long it lasted then? A whole 13 minutes. Yep, three and a half hours to charge each battery for not even a quarter hour's worth of mowing. So what are my plans for this mower then? Well, I'm not really sure. I can't sell it the way that it is, so I'll just keep it for now. And who knows, maybe this is my reason to get some DeWalt tools so I can use those batteries. They may not be good for a mower, but I'm sure they'll work well enough for an impact or a drill. So my question is, what do you think I should do with this mower? Take the battery apart and take out the bad cells and rebuild it? Or take off the electric motor and replace it with a gasoline engine instead? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.